pictures, watch the videos, and tell your wife to sit down and watch the show. She yep. got, she has a role to play, but she's not a publicist. No. And you don't want it to do damage to your brand. So tell her to sit down and watch the show and and and, and do what she does, but stay off of defending me. I, I, she, Samson doesn't have to defend or answer to any of us. He has to get on stage, present his work, and then thank everybody for supporting him, and then use those haters as fuel for the next fight. Yes. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Muscle Discord. And we have a very special guest. Super honored to have him on the show. IFBB Pro, Sean Ray. Man, welcome to the show. All right, man. Fresh off the airplane. Just flew yeah. in last night from England. Well, man, I appreciate you coming to the show. It's for full circle for me because I'm a huge fan of you. I've watched all your DVDs, the Final Countdown, To the Extreme, yeah. Sean Ray Inside and Out, man. So I'm like, I'm a real true fan of yours and it's super awesome to have you on my show and just to get to shoot the shit with you here uncensored we're going all in we're going to do an arnold uk recap we're going to talk about men's classic physique division top five we'll go through that quick we'll go through the men's open division top five um we'll talk about what's going on with samson Dowda. there's a lot of that news going around in the industry so we want to kind of touch base on that and get your thoughts on what's happening there as well so i want to jump right into it uh, I want to share my screen and talk about the uh, Classic Physique Division at the UK. Let's do the most recent show here. So, all right. Okay. So, so you know, I was there for the bodybuilding. So, the Classic Physique, I actually missed. Okay. Um, I did know, based on what I had seen going into the show, that uh, Wesley was probably going to be the victor. I actually um, was pleasantly surprised when I saw Brian Anzi yeah. come up. Uh, Wesley showed us a glimpse of what what can be done in a year's worth of training. I mean, if nothing else, he gets the most improved, right? I mean, mm. he uh, he showed up in Columbus, Ohio, uh, with an I think an alternative package. Um, some people thought that um, Raymond Dino, based on yeah. his win the previous year and his first runner up, was going to be a shoe in for this show. But I think the judges were properly uh, respected for rewarding improvements. Yes. And what Wesley arguably was the most improved. He carried that over um, into uh, England over the weekend. Uh, didn't have Raymond Dino standing next to him, but um, the surprise was was Breon because Breon's like uh, very similar to me in that he's not a six foot bodybuilder, right? In this classic physique division, we've seen a bunch of six footers with uh, Raymond Dino, Wesley, and Urs. They tower over Breon, but Breon fought his way back and passed Urs, who had some problems with his coloring. Um, but Brian's persistency is is actually, it, he got rewarded over the weekend for sure. Yeah, uh, that's how I felt too. I'm, I'm glad he got second, finally. I mean, Urs has been holding him off. Yeah. What do you think about Urs's physique? Like, um, finally, Brian takes him out. But Urs looked good. He looked yeah. fuller here at the UK than he did at the Arnold. He looked better at the UK than he did at the Arnold. What are your thoughts on Urs? Now, Urz's trajectory, he's going in the right direction. Don't get it twisted. Brian, mm -hmm. the former two-time classic physique Olympia champion. We, we can't discount. He didn't lose to a slouch, and he, he's held Brian at bay for the past couple of shows. He got caught this time, and some of the criticisms were his coloring. Um, I'm not so sure that Urz has to do a whole lot to get back on track, but you've got to give props where props are due. Wesley was on another level for his improvement, and Brian, uh, ever the consistent nipping at your heels type of class physique. He got he got rewarded. I don't think Urz was disappointed that he lost to Breon, for example. Um, yeah. Certainly, uh, probably he knows what he has to do to correct his mistakes. It's not a physical one. Urz has everything uh, and then some, and he also has time and youth on his size. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Breon's like 43 years old. Yeah, he's 44, 43, 44, yeah. Yeah, what is Urz? Maybe not even 30? He's 25 or 26. He's got plenty of time. This is not a big setback for Urs losing to a former time Olympian. Um, but the two guys that arguably were the most improved on that stage was Wesley and Breon. And, and I think it should have been one, two that way. Um, yeah. People didn't Wesley because he kind of got a wide waist a little bit mm -hmm. in a long or so. Uh, but you know what? He hides it well when he hits those Arnold Schwarzenegger type poses. Yeah. Very ripped of a young Arnold Schwarzenegger. Could he use more calves? Yeah, because he's, he's so freaking tall. Yeah. But you know, 
he's he's been rewarded for that level of condition that he brought to that division. And you can't overlook that. That sometimes can overlook some of the genetic gifts that some of the other athletes have is when you bring in that crisp conditioning that separates you from the other guys, which again, which is why I think Hottie Cheapen won the men's open bodybuilding. He's not a better bodybuilder than Samson. Uh, no. The, the, how do you say the name? Dowda? Da- Duada? Yeah, Dowda. Duada. Yeah, I, yeah. I catch a lot of flack for butchering his last name, but Samson yeah. is a better bodybuilder than Hottie, but yep. like uh, Bentley, he's being rewarded on that conditioning. Yes, 100%. Agree with that. Um, okay, so let's jump into the men's open. Um, I'm really going to want your take on this. So oh. let's just go right into Samson Dowda because I want your opinion on this. Listen, Why- Samson, Samson, his, Samson's got everything to do to be Mr. Olympia, okay? Yes. He has the kind of physique that I would like to see holding on to that standout trophy. He's just got better genetics than Hadi Chupan. Uh, he hits these poses nice. Sometimes he's a little small, kind of Franco Colombo st- style of mm. poser. But yeah. his posing is commended for such a big guy. He he won the best poser award two weeks ago in Columbus. If they had one last weekend, he would have won it. The knock on him is he's not hard and ripped in the places that Hottie is. Yeah, Hottie's back is shredded. Hottie's chest and pecs are shredded. Um, he just is harder in places now. Samson being the darker of the two and with the thicker skin and a mm-hmm. lot more body weight and mass, I don't think he'll ever be as hard as Hottie. We can't expect this guy to drop 10 or 15 pounds and be as ripped as Hottie. I don't know that it's ever going to happen. He's got to catch Hottie on an off day um, and and beat him on just overall balance. I don't want Samson to get caught up with trying to get shredded that he loses all of his, you know, his gifts. His gifts are his size, his fullness, his roundness. Mm-hmm. Uh, those muscle bellies are sick. However, he looks like he's always got kind of a thin layer of water. Yeah. He's got that really dark Nigerian skin that doesn't highlight the cuts and the rips that Hottie mm-hmm. can be version. Uh, but he can pull a hat out of, uh, out of his hat like Ronnie did. Ronnie in 2001 came off that 2000 Olympia being a little heavy, came yeah. into the Arnold Classic in 2001 at about 247. And uh, I don't think we'll ever see Samson that light, but you know, Samson coming in a little bit lighter, more finesse. Uh, it might be a pleasure to see because he might be able to get some detail in areas that he can't being almost 300 pounds. But why Why do you think Samson can't get the stride of glutes? I know, you know, Flex Wheeler had that issue. Uh, it, it just some bodybuilders just can't get it. Is it because he's not doing the cardio? Because uh, Milo said uh, on a podcast yesterday that he was doing an hour. And then the truth is Samson was probably doing a 30 to 45 minutes cardio yeah. not even an hour let me tell you something that will come back to haunt you right you you have to do the work yeah. it doesn't matter that it's are it doesn't matter that you're tired hottie is being rewarded because he he's fucking hungry this yes. guy lost the Olympia title he knows what it's like to win he knows what it's like to lose and if either of the two had the most to lose it was hottie hottie had to seek redemption i guarantee yeah. you hottie was doing at least if not more than that Yes, he do- gonna have to dig deeper. He's gonna yeah. have to dig deeper and do the work. Bottom line, if he's doing thirty minutes or forty-five minutes or cutting corners, this is a good lesson for him to learn that he got beat by a bodybuilder that shouldn't beat beat him, mm-hmm. and he's got to work. He's got to outwork this guy. He's got to do more. I did an hour and a half. Fuck it, I was doing forty-five minutes in the morning and forty-five minutes at night, and I'm half stamps in size. Yeah, Potty's detail may be coming from the fact that he's doing more. So Samson doesn't have to re do his entire physique you gotta do more man you gotta you gotta leave it all in the gym but why is it why he 13 shows last year no strata never had strata glutes he may never have he may never get them listen um shredded glutes are a sign of conditioning yes right um not everyone lee haney never had them and he won seven consecutive olympias right um mine were touch and go based on how i showed up in in a contest i jay cutler was never known for his glutes Mm-hmm. Um, that's not necessarily the measure of conditioning. He's going to have to work on, I think, just coming down a little bit in the body weight and increase. If that's the only criticism we have is that he needs to do more cardio. He's got an easy road to hoe going into October, but okay. he needs to, he's not, there's not another mass monster Samson size. So no. he needs to get it out of his head. That size is the thing. This is a conditioning contest. It's why he's not winning has nothing to do with body parts has nothing to do with 
uh, the size factor. So now if you tell me that I've got to put on a bunch more size to be competitive, that's a lot harder than you telling me I got to get in shape. Yes. Getting in shape is sometimes suffering. Getting in shape reminds me of Rocky getting up and jogging at five o'clock in the morning. He's going to have to get out of his comfort zone and do yeah. some things to get in shape that he's not used to doing. But Hadi is beatable. Derek is beatable. And if I had to bet money on one of the three, I would bet that Samson would be the next Mr. Olympia, but he's going to have to do it in the gym. And it's going to have to do it by suffering for condition, not diuretics, not drugs. It's conditioning. He's going to have to change the way he trains. Okay. What about Samson's waistline in between the poses right there? You can see yeah. it's protruding, right? Well, he you know what? Dorian Yates had the same issue. Uh, Phil Heath had the same issue. It's not what's holding him back. He yeah. definitely can improve on that control factor. He's got to be yeah. aware of flaws. He's got to be aware of those weaknesses. And I don't know who he actually listens to, but as a lay person, I'd be sitting here looking at this video like, like you're showing right now. Yeah, I, I would be Samson just picking myself apart. Like, okay, I, I got to do better. He's a great poser. Yes, he's he is. Got, he's got to do better in the transitions. He's got to recognize that, you know what? He doesn't have the Christmas tree that he's trying to hit mm -hmm. probably because he's coming in too heavy. Yeah. Uh, so he's got to get the big size factor out. He's got to go into refinement mode. Maybe, you know, talk to somebody like Ronnie. Ronnie went through this. And in 2001, where he almost died at the Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. Ronnie had everything and then some at that 2001 Arnold Classic. I'd be in Ronnie's ear. I'd be like, Ronnie, what did you do from 2000 to 2001 to win the Arnold? Like, I'd be seeking advice. Um, and just conversation, because I'd be looking for answers to what it is I need to do. But he's on the right track. This is not something that's not fixable for Samson, but he's getting beat by less qualified bodybuilders. And that would keep me up if I was Samson. Okay. And so let's talk a little bit more about Samson and, you know, the criticism that he thinks he's getting when we talk about his conditioning issue, maybe the waistline issue. And, uh, you know, I spoke this about this on my other shows, my live reaction shows, uh, that his wife, Marlena, uh, reached out to me after I made a, a video about Samson's conditioning and how I think he's not going to win the Arnold Classic Ohio. She DM'd me, uh, you know, personally attacked me and, and my channel and me as a bodybuilder. I like I just it was really <laughs> weird. And uh, right. And so I mean her being involved with Samson cl so closely and now, you know, prepping him for the Arnold UK and maybe other shows in the future, you know, and then Samson coming out on his Instagram stories after the Ohio, firing Milos, saying that he's got to go to the hospital, my body's failing me. I mean, as a professional bodybuilder, was that the right recourse in how he, you know, did that online? What's happened? What's he's lost some fans do this as well. They, I see the comments like I, I, I lost some respect for Samson the way he helped he dealt with this. How he's talking about the fans humiliating him, coming yeah. out his like. What's your take on all that? We're living in, we're in some strange times where who's Samson talking to? Like he could, him himself can pick up the phone and call you, but like you know, I, I never called out a reporter who had an opinion. I never even fired back at a bodybuilder who had an opinion. Uh, he's got to tell his wife just so you know, this is my career. You yeah. know, you're along, you're along for the ride, but, uh, you know, I'll deal with the fans. And Samson really doesn't have to answer to criticism. You know, you, I, this is, it, the internet is a strange thing. They look for validation from their fans. And the one person that, you know, stands out as the one that's not on board with what everybody else is saying. Trust me, I know, I'm, I'm a critic, right? I'm, I'm in the media. Yeah. And the we, we moved into a place where the athletes have direct access to their critics and can use their platform to fire back. And she's going to defend her man, whether he's the winner or not. She's going to go try to put those fires out. She's going to put her own narrative on it. That's, you know, that's a mark of like marking your territory, but mm -hmm. to a person, you got to be able to tell your camp, listen, this is my career. Let me, I don't need you fighting my battles. You know, I, I had the, uh, uh, the unique experience of having my daughter on a reality TV show, my entire family. Yeah. And my wife was out there trying to answer these people that were criticizing her for pushing her daughter too hard and being uh, to ignoring the other daughter who was just kind of a wing person on the show. It was about my dancer daughter, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's ignoring the youngest daughter and she's pushing her little daughter too hard. Uh, people become very protective of, a person they know intimately that might be mentally weak 
um, and might be very hypersensitive to criticism. Samson didn't get here being a wallflower, but I've always said this, our sport is made up of a lot of misfits. And by that, I mean, we're drawn to the weights and to this body dysmorphia thing because someone told us we couldn't do it. We're too small. We're too fat. You know, you need to do this and you can't do that. And, and we take all of that stuff uh, into the gym with us. We rebuild our physique. Sometimes our minds are not on par with our level of development. Mm -hmm. Samson's one of the three bodybuilders on the planet. It, you know, it's like you, know, you see a, you, you see like an elephant with flies flying around its eyes. It's not trying to swat those flies away, right? It, it, it's just a fly. It's the tiny, it's like a pimple on a whale's butt. You can't, as big as you are, Samson, and the footprint and the things that you've accomplished, try to swat all of these flies that are flying around your eyes. And you don't need someone with a fly swatter trying to smash everybody's opinion when we have, you know, First Amendment <laughs> to freedom mm -hmm. of speech. Exactly. And, and this is really not me. Social media is not media. So trying to hunt you down because you have a following and a voice and an opinion to try to correct what you don't know about my husband is is kind of she's going to have a tough road in this yeah. industry. I would tell Samson, honey, sit back, don't respond, relax. And Samson needs to get off of social media, getting ready for the show and stop trying to make excuses for what people see or what they don't see. I heard that I saw the video where he said, you know, uh, my body's beat up and I, mm -hmm. I burn out and all this other stuff. And then the next day he's saying, don't believe everything you hear. And I'm going to be in the show. There's a, there's a famous boxer. I think it's Ryan Garcia. He's guilty of the same thing. Um, oh yeah. In, in our yep. sport, finding out that these athletes are now showing the cheeks in their armor. Derek Lunsford's laughing. Hottie Chupin is getting more fired up. We're showing our vulnerabilities by responding to the peanut gallery. And that's me and you talking about yep. what we like or what we don't like. We don't have a horse in this race. We're not going to gain, gain anything by saying Samson's the next. I've been saying Samson is the next Mr. Olympia for the past two years. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't shit on him when he gets beat by a former Mr. Olympia. I don't get, I don't shit on him when he gets beat by a 212 Olympia champion. He is one of the top three premier bodybuilders on the planet. Yep. And, and me, me actually walking in those shoes and knowing what that feels like, Santa's going to have to find a way to correct the things that he can control and ignore the things that he can't. You cannot sit there and absorb those blows of criticism as if they mean something. Your opinion counts for nothing. My opinion counts for nothing. Yep. Go in the gym, Samson. Address the issues. When the show is over, give yourself a 48-hour cooling off period before you say anything. Study the pictures, watch the videos, and tell your wife to sit down and watch the show. She, yep. got, she has a role to play, but she's not a publicist. No. And you don't want any damage to your brand. So tell her to sit down and watch the show and and, and, and do what she does. But stay off of defending me. I, I, she, Samson doesn't have to defend or answer to any of us. He has to get on stage, present his work, and then thank everybody for supporting him. And then use those haters as fuel for the next fight. Yes. And what's your thoughts on her being his coach? You, like, listen, is that a bad? Listen, yeah. She may be everything to him, being yeah. his wife, whatever. But it'd be like Mike Tyson saying, I'm coming back and my girl's going to train me. But she may be everything. She may know everything and all that. This is a man's business, right? You mm -hmm. think Todd is in there with his wife? You think these other bodybuilders are in there with their girls? I don't know that that's the kind of energy I need because mm -hmm. I have to live with my wife. I have to love my wife. I have to respect my wife. I have to take care of my wife. I, all those things. I don't want her in my business yes. as bodybuilder. I would think that if it's working for him, let him look, he just freaking got second place to Mr. Olympia with or without her. She was there. So yeah. for him, it might be an asset for you and I, it might be a distraction, but that's a little too close to home for me because I need my me time. Like this is my dream. Yeah. And if you want to share his dream and bring her through that with him, more power to him. Very few guys can actually do that. Yeah. Um, but there are those unique individuals. They need that. And they ride or die with their girl. Um, and I can't say I disrespect it. I just, it's not for me, but for him, look, he didn't go backwards, you know, in England. No. They did have the rubber match, and he lost to Mr. Olympia. He didn't get beat by third place, who was nowhere close to him getting second. She didn't screw him up. So if she didn't screw him up, maybe she helped him get there. Without her, he's not there. So we can't really get into his head that way. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Not for, not for me. No. Um, that's another thing too. I want to discuss was the was the scorecard. Um, some people saying were saying it was close, but what's your opinion of a close show? Because there was a six point spread between Hardy and Samson. That's uh, not it's not close. That's what I said. I, it's that's not close. That's the unanimous decision. Yes. So there's another channel out there saying it was you know Samson was in the lead and the pre it, that's not the case. No. He was never in the lead. No, at no. all. And you all know, right. listen, if you lose by one point, it's the same as losing by twenty. So mm -hmm. we're we're splitting hairs here. Samson, I think, knows that he's losing at the moment to a better, more conditioned bodybuilder. Yeah. But he is not losing to someone that he cannot beat. And that should give him fire. Um, that yeah. second place trophy, that second place prize money, it's enough to fuel you to try to still become number one. He has nothing to hang his head about. And if he was overcoming some mental challenges after the Arnold talk, talking about his body failing him and having a coach that was kind of a, a tumultuous breakup, um, he still managed to to land where we predicted he would be either mm -hmm. first or second. he didn't go yeah. back. He didn't go, he didn't go tremendously backwards and he's still heading in the right direction. When we get to October, we're going to be talking about Samson the same way we're talking about Derek defending his title, the same way about Hadi Chupan. Anything can happen on the day of the show. And of the three, Samson's still my favorite because if yeah. he gets hungry enough and he does the things that are necessary to win, he can win. And I think it's highly possible that he's still in, within uh, winning. You So you do think he can win even yeah. with not striding glutes, like like Derek Lunsford peeled glutes, Hottie Schuppen glutes. I know it's a, like, that's just the standard now. That's just the standard of today's age of bodybuilding. It wasn't maybe back in your day when you were doing it, but right. now it is. And every Mr. You, Olympia. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you that those little guys can get that that look because they're not 300 pounds nearly, yeah. right? Um and that being said, uh, we had Ronnie Coleman who had striated glutes, though. The big Ronnie, Rammy striated glutes, which is an example of what's possible. And yes. he needs to seek advice, right? So yeah. maybe it, it's not beyond um, asking the question. Those guys are accessible. There yeah. are people with knowledge and wisdom out there that he doesn't have to look too far and wide to try to work on those. And those, again, Wesley didn't win because he's a superior athlete. Wesley won because he improved. Yes. Samson. The three of the three, Samson would be able to show the greatest amount of improvement because he's got a much more volume to work with. And we can literally go out and say, arguably, we've seen the best of Hottie and we've seen the best of Derek because they're a little like us. Yeah. And, and we, we peak sooner and we don't change that dramatically. So we know exactly what we're going to get in October from those two guys. If Samson comes in with a little peekaboo glutes, mm -hmm. with a nice streamlined waistline, and comes in with some detail that we don't see. That's dietary. That's mental fortitude to go in and work on that posing, take your body to places you've never done before, get the conditioning that you've never had. That improvement on a physique like that will be more glaring than if we see the same hottie show up and the same Derek show up. Yeah. All right. So th there is potential there um, for him to win that. I think the Mr. Olympia. Um, now the split with Milos. What's your thoughts on how that went down? Like, was that, was it called for? Do you think there's more to the story about Milos I, I, that I've, I've been made aware of and I can't discuss it right now, unfortunately, but I think that will come out and will open some people's eyes as to like what was really going on between Milos and Samson. Sure. Um, but uh, let me tell just, you something. It's the price of doing business, right? We watched yes. Mike Tyson destroy boxers from yeah. 1985 to 1989. Mike Tyson chose to get married, chose to fire his coach. Yeah. He, he got rid of the guy that got him there and brought in one of his buddies, Aaron Snowell, and whoever the other guys that where they grew up with. Yeah. And they didn't know what to do when the guy got in trouble. And we watched Buster Douglas walk right through Mike Tyson, and Mike was never the same. In this industry, in this day and age, we got bodybuilders changing trainers all the time. Samson didn't get to where he's at because of Milos. Milos joined the, the ride. Samson experienced some, some glory. And I think Milos may have gotten a large uh, part of the credit. But let's be honest. Samson was bodybuilding long before Milos ever came into the scene. Yeah. Let's not let's not give too much credit where credit's not necessarily due. Because Samson trained, right? Like Milos, uh, like Charles Glass, like Hani Rambad, they're finishers, right? They're finishers. And, they, and when they come in on the back end, they can fuck you up. Yeah. And they can ruin, they can ruin a good thing. 
And if you're trending in the wrong direction, you gotta you gotta make the hard decision to cut ties. And sometimes, you know, you've got relationships advice. A lot of these trainers slash gurus come in and and they're there for the right purpose of trying to make you a bodybuilder better. But then yeah. the next thing you're talking about what you need to do with your spare time, what you need to do with your life, what you need to do with your finances, what you need to do with the people around you and, and what shows you should do. And the next thing you know, they're telling you how to live your life. Yeah. So the scope of sometimes these invasive trainer slash gurus, you have to make the tough decisions of saying, you know what, we've gone as far as we can. I'm going to go on my own. Did Samson take a step backwards in, in uh, the UK, Arnold? I don't think he did. No, he uh, closed the gap against Hardy. It was a narrow... Yeah. By so points, that, yeah. It, it tells you that he can survive without someone that has an alpha male personality telling him what he needs to do. And sometimes you can stay too long with the same coach and nothing happens. You, there's diminishing returns. Yes. So sometimes getting the infusion of some other advice or doing something on your own and maybe owning your space, it may be just what the doctor ordered. Whether they're friends or not, listen, these guys change trainers and coaches and gyms and wives and and all kind of shit through it. This is the journey of life. Yeah. And Samson um, is, he showed to us that he can survive without me most. So was it a good decision? Maybe a tough decision, but I think we see Samson grow up and not have to be under someone else's direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I could go more on that, uh, but I've kind of exhausted that and how I feel about Milos. I, I think Milos is a great coach and deserves some more respect uh, with that whole process and well, the fact that on. so there are a lot of coaches right mm -hmm. and their job is to help guide you yeah but end of the day it's the bodybuilder's job to do the work yeah. and these coaches are not grandfathered in I, 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 I mc shows all over the world right so let's just as an example i'm emceeing the the arnold classic amateur yeah I'm doing it one year and i do it the next year and i'm i blink and i've been doing it for eight years and i, I get bored with it mm -hmm. and i move on yeah. And then someone else steps up to the mic and they go, what happened? Sean get fired? You know, what, or, or myself, Hey, am I doing it? No, we got someone else. There's no guarantee that because you're working with someone, you're going to ride up, ride and die all the way with them. I mean, some guys have relationships like George Farah mm -hmm. and Mr. Jackson, um, Phil Heath and Hani Rombod. Some guys can ride it all the way through, but when a coach comes in, it's not a, a permanent situation. It happens in the NFL. You know, you oh, no. lose this and I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm just saying that the way me or uh, Samson, you know, just ditched Milos after two and a half years together where he changed his the, the trajectory of his career. He's can buy in McLaren's and he's living a lifestyle. He quit his job and yeah. Milos got him there. Milos did that well, for Samson. Okay. Right. And then the that, disrespect that. Sam, to disrespect Milos, not text him for a whole week, not return his texts, not get back to him and then break up with him on social media, IG stories. And say I'm, my body's like, failing me. I mean, that's come like, on. I, sounds like Real Housewives of the body. Yeah, day, yeah, exactly. Well, it was. We have too much exposure to these guys. Like back in the day, there's nowhere to follow that storyline that you just got done yes. watching play out in real time. I don't know that it has anything to do with respect because if you look at one of Milos's last posts, he thanks Samson for the ride. Um, you're not grandfathered in to go all the way to the big dance just because you're a friend. Um, no. Came to house you helped me get a car you helped give me direction advice none of these guys are i mean so it, this this is exactly a, a, a snapshot of life but we're, we get exposure to it because of the internet and yeah. we really are talking about shit that we that shouldn't even bother us because when we go to a bodybuilding show we just want to see the show yeah want to hear the storyline unless it's about triumph tribulation overcoming all this but i don't want to hear about guys breaking up with their coaches yeah wives and you know gary stratton went on tour one year and he won like six or seven shows came home and his wife took all of his money and divorced him i mean that would have been a big story <laughs> a lesser bodybuilder would crumble maybe even commit suicide but you know yeah. gary he went and signed a contract with the wbf the richest mm -hmm. contract that you can sign this basketball yeah. coach for uh san antonio or miami he went through a divorce and as soon as he got divorced he signed the richest coaching contract in nba history I don't care about these coaches. I think mm -hmm. what's good for bodybuilder is making those tough decisions. Samson made a tough decision that he's going to have to live with. Milos has a lot of guys that he's coaching. Milos is not going out of business. No. And Milos has dealt with far worse breakups than the one that we've been privy to. And I'm sure he'll tell you that. So let's not get sidetracked. Being yeah. a fan of orders 
about these guys' personal journeys with their coaches because truth be told, I never had a coach. I, I took all the responsibility. I suffered all the setbacks. And, you know, I wish we can get back to that place where these coaches aren't coaching. They're actually training in the gym like Charles Glass used to with yeah. all these guys. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed on that point. Uh, too much space. Yeah. So I want to talk about the big announcement, the $500,000 first place prize uh, for the 2025 Arnold Classic Ohio. What's your take on now with the Mr. Olympia, you know, being the Super Bowl of bodybuilding? Yeah. What are they going to do? What do you think they're going to do? Match it or beat it? And are they going to do it for 2024? Or they'll wait till 2025 to make that announcement. They don't have to do anything right now. Listen, that's just, that's someone throwing it out there, right? Until that show actually happens, mm -hmm. Olympia's been bringing up their prize money every single year. There's only a, one reason why the sport of bodybuilding got better when I was bodybuilding in the 90s. And that's because somebody else, like Vince McMahon, came in, yeah. raised the stakes, and then Joe Weider had to go to the next level and continue to make the Olympia the premier event. There's a reason why the Olympia prize money went up because after David Pecker left, here came Jake Wood, you know? Well, we're talking about one division. Yeah. That's going to get an extra $200,000. You got to remember the Olympia has 11 divisions. Yeah. You got to remember, you got to qualify to go to the Olympia. You can't be invited. Arnold, hand, they hand select who they want at their show. I think there were eight or nine athletes in the mm -hmm. pro men's building in England. At the Arnold Classic in Ohio, I think they had seven or eight guys. So they don't stack up, you know, uh, brick by brick. These are two different shows. The Arnold has over 20,000 athletes, from fencing to strongman to painting to ballroom dancing. And, of course, they have bodybuilding. But let's be honest. The Olympia is about the competition. Yeah. And there's 11 pro divisions. These guys are being flown in. They're all being put up. They're there for multiple days. They've got the prize money and the prestige. The Arnold is everything as it relates to inclusivity. It's about time they're giving away this kind of money for first place. The question is, are they going to do the same for the bikini? Will they do the same for fitness? Will they? Okay, so Arnold is putting his money where his passion is, and that's in men's bodybuilding. But it yeah. really is a, it is a winner-take-all show. It's 500000 for the winner. It's not 500000 for fifth place. No. Uh, as it relates to the Olympia platform, that is a fitness bodybuilding bikini weekend that the premier athletes are competing. Arnold's yeah. is a festival, Arnold sports festival. So to talk about the two in the same breath would be like talking about Taco Bell and Morton steakhouse. Yeah. Um, it's not taking anything away from the Arnold. It's great that they threw more money at the Arnold. I think uh, the uh, Olympia, which has been doing every single year, adding more and more uh, prize money and prestige will answer that call. They don't have to do it in 2024. I've always argued for more prize money, not for first place, but for last place. The more money our last place guy gets, the better off uh, our athletes are because I think the guys from the bottom up or the bulk of our industry, uh, I don't like a winner take all. And I think that you know these athletes are having an opportunity to make careers out of themselves because there's more money being trickling down, the trickle down effect. So yeah. I would have loved to see that extra $200,000 go from the bottom up, not from the top okay. down. And the Olympia will answer the call in due time, but they answer the bell every single year. So great for what's happening in Ohio. It's not happening until 2025. Yeah. The Olympia will respond in kind because they are in the process of making sure everybody gets more money. Everybody gets more pay. And that's that's the good thing about the Olympia. Well, you excuse me, you've always been an advocate for the athletes. Even back in the day, you were advocating for the athletes to get benefits and you know, things like that, that, right? Like people probably don't remember that stuff. I remember that. I mean, that's, that's your call for it. You were really looking out for the athletes. Yeah. Well, I get, you know, I didn't, I put my money where my mouth is. Instead of talking about it, I just produced my own show. So yeah. I got the Sean Hawaii Classic for the past eight years in Hawaii, which is November 16th this year. I've added pro divisions. I've got pro bikini, pro men's physique. It's an Olympia qualifier. We've got the uh, national qualifier. It's taking place at the Hawaii Convention Center. So rather than talk about, uh, other people giving away money. I, I raise my own money and give it away to the athletes with the okay. people that I that people I work with. And I wish more athletes would do that too, instead of talk about what other people are doing at their shows. If you're not happy with the money that's being given away, create your own show and give away your own money and make a difference that way. And I've been doing that for the past 15 years. Awesome. And I wanted to get your take on this. Why is Fuad commenting commentating the the Arnold classic well, shows? 
they they have the right to pick and choose who they want to be the voice of their podcast broadcast. I did it one time for Generation Iron. Uh, I was working one other time for Muscular Development. Yeah. I'm not involved with uh, choosing the personnel. Um, and Brian Powers, who's the promoter, can pick and choose who they want based on their audience. Remember, they had Nick Strength and Power one year. Yeah, that Iron. Uh, they they've they brought different people in for different reasons. I'm not a part of that decision making process. Um, are there more qualified people? I remember when Mike Adam Lee was doing it back when I did it, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the commentator. Yes. When I was so they have choices that they have to make. I'm a fan. I don't care who, who's doing the commentating. I'm there in person watching it live. Well, my, I'm just like, why not have you? Cause you're like you, the wealth of knowledge you have with critiquing these guys. Sure. Fuad has his experience, but then you have Samson out on stage and it just it's so it's hard to watch him try and critique Samson and he's yeah. kind of being a little bit biased there and it's just like why when you have a guy like, that's like I like to say you miss me now you miss me now yeah exactly. uh, you know, obviously you know I have a, a cutting edge style of broadcasting kind of like I pattern myself behind like Charles Barkley and Stephen A. Smith you know no filter just see tell it how I see it it's it's an acquired taste but I've been there and yeah. I did that right like I don't have anything to prove at the microphone critiquing athletes, but we're living in a day and age sometimes where political correctness um, supersedes wisdom and knowledge. And I can't not to what I've actually never watched one of his broadcasts. Okay. So I don't know his style and technique. I don't like coaches commentating because it's biased. It's slanted. Yes. And what you see, some of the talking heads, the majority of the talking heads today, they've all got athletes in the show. They've all got a vested interest in the show. Um, and so you don't get the truth. I've never had an athlete in a contest that I was critiquing, which is why you get the real truth. Because exactly. I got gained. Um, but I've been there and I did that. I, I'm comfortable watching. Um, I don't. I don't listen to the commentators. I I trust my eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I have yet to watch something on a on a screen because I pride myself on being there. I haven't missed the Arnold Classic in 36 years. This will be my 38th Mr. Olympia competition in person. Mm -hmm. So. There's a difference in my style and someone else's style, but I'm glad that people kind of recognize that. And some people miss the idea that I'm not behind the microphone anymore, but I had my, I had a good run. And yeah. Some people got to make room. We're living in a different time. People got likes and follows and audiences and podcasts. Yeah. And I expect the idea that they want to capture those people that follow those voices. Awesome. Okay. And to wrap it up, I know you got to go here. Um, Team Mutant, joining Mutant. Tell me about your experience with that. I'm a part of Mutant as well it's for context, but let me know how your, your thoughts. And Jim, the whole crew. One of the best decisions I made. I mean, uh, my, my good friend Ian Bell is the one that kind of exposed me to the entire Mutant family. Uh, I love the fact that Jim McMahon is an old school guy like myself. He's also born in 65. But what they were doing um, at the time they were doing it is nothing short of amazing because I didn't know the Mutant story yeah. from beginning to end. And I had a chance to go up to the headquarters out there in Vancouver had a chance to befriend most of the people that work in the organization, uh, seen the factory and the warehouse. I see the passion uh, and the opportunities that Jim's been providing a lot of the representatives, um, you know, in over a hundred countries. And, and I'm, I'm out there sharing uh, my wisdom and my knowledge on supplements with people that aren't exposed to mutants. So I feel like Jim's given me enough rope to be a cowboy out there and yeah. introduce the introduce the product and the brand to gyms that don't carry it to stores that haven't got it uh, in stock. And uh, wherever I go, I always know that I'm flying the flag. Um, it's, it's a family relationship. It's not mm -hmm. just Andrew, Shaw, Sean, Clarita. I mean, we've got guys that have never competed to guys mm -hmm. that are in the, uh, and Jim's been giving and creating opportunities for a lot of different people. And I'm just glad to be a part of that messaging, not to mention He's very acutely aware of fillers and, and artificial flavorings and, and stuff that are that makes stuff taste good rather than yep. it's good for you. Yep. So it's one of those things where it's not just selling the product, but you know what? When you try it and you read the ingredients and it works, you realize that you're in the right place. I'm with the right company with the right people at the right time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I just wanted your, your take on that. And before we leave, uh, any upcoming, you, you mentioned briefly some shows, but any, this, let's yeah. give a shout out to your shows that are coming up. And well, I'm on a, on a tour, man. Like I said, I just got back from England. Yeah. I'll be headed to Jay Cutler Classic here in two weeks in Las Vegas, last Saturday of uh, March. Then I'll be off to uh, Switzerland for the Swiss okay. Grand Prix. I think my seventh year emceeing that show. Yeah. Uh, I'll come home and go back to Germany for the FIBO with the Mutant Group. A uh, huge trade show out there in Cologne. Uh, this would be my 29th year going to the Cologne uh, FIBO. 
And then after that, man, it just it gets kind of crazy. I'll go to the George Farah uh, premiere of The Guru in, New York, in um, St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, in the end of April. I'll be at the Evo Sports Festival in, in uh, San Jose, California, actually Santa Clara, California, April the 20th. I'll be at the Pittsburgh Pro in, in the middle of May. And uh, that's about as far as I can go. If you follow me on Instagram at Sean Ray IFB Pro, you'll see the rest of my tour. But I, I don't get tired of doing what I do. It's a no. labor of love. And it's a reunion every time I get around the old school cats. But it makes me even feel more accomplished when I see new, new school guys like yourself coming up behind, appreciating and respecting the footprints that I've left behind. And uh, it always makes me feel good when people recognize my body of work, my contribution. And that's another reason why, you know, it's hard to leave bodybuilding because it's in my blood. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And that's why I'm I'm so involved in it now and, and started this podcast. So, well, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Uh, I have to have you back on to discuss more things in the industry, but uh, we will well, catch you on the next one, man. One, yeah. One of the things where I'm yeah. coming back, I build with pros, buildwithpros.com. That's all my training, all my okay. motivation. My inspiration uh it was overdue it's a new platform for me okay. to be regurgitate everything not in a journalistic style but i'm i'm kind of a i'm there i'm on the screen telling you what i went through how i did it leaving leaving you the blueprint if i did it you can do it um it's a kind of a, a virtual coaching type thing but check it out at buildwithpros.com we've got specials going on it's a seven week course and i think it'd be beneficial to the and to the advance uh, i'm not a a hands-on coach, so to speak, yeah. but that's between my ears is being delivered in first person on this website at buildwithpros.com. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put all the links into my description for the video. Uh, all right, brother. Man, I really appreciate right. it. Okay. Thank you. Talk soon. All right. Peace. Bye -bye. Thank you.